So with your Qualysys system, you record motion, but once you have that motion, you want to analyze it in some way. Of course, you can use a Qualysys analysis module, which will automatically do it for you. And in the vast majority of those situations for the analysis module, that is actually done in Visual 3D. It's just behind the scenes. What uh, you can do, though, is go beyond what a Qualysys module does for you, as you might have specific requirements, or you're coming up with something that's not done in a module, uh, different motion. And that's where Visual 3D comes in to do really whatever you want. So when you first open Visual 3D, it's, uh, I like to describe it sort of like uh, the first time you open Microsoft Word. You technically know you could write a New York Times bestseller in Microsoft Word. But to be able to do that requires more than just having the program. There's a, a learning curve. We're going to load files in here. So our motion files are going to end up in here. And we are also going to use a calibration file associated with those motion files. We're going to put them right there. If you went to the MarcOS session, you probably saw that they did a static trial and motion files, motion trial. The static trial is used to create a biomechanical model in Visual 3D that then is applied to those motion files. So essentially, that's exactly what we are going to do. If you click open, you can see here, I'm just going to pick these two motion files. Uh, they're already prepared for us using clusters. And once they're loaded in here, uh, looking at an individual one, here you see we have our subject walking. Those are just dots. Quite frankly, that's not terribly meaningful because these just being dots, we don't have any real information that we can obtain from them other than where they are in space. And that's why we want to build a biomechanical model to do that. In models, we have nothing. So let's go ahead and load a file to build the model. So I click on model, create add static calibration file, hybrid model from C3D file. That's going to be the most common way you're going to open it. I know, very wordy. I didn't come up with it, but that's how you load it. And I'm just going to select cluster static. Visual CD says, OK, you have a static file. What do you want to associate it with? In our case, we only have two trials loaded. They are both for the same model. But you could have multiple static trials for uh, different sets. Or as happens often, you perform a test, a marker falls off halfway through, have to do another static trial. So that's why you might have to as well. Here is our static calibration file that we want to use to build the model on. Every one of these segments we're about to build is going to have two circles involved to define, essentially, a truncated cone. What that means is we need to define each of these circles. Unfortunately, I start with the one exception to what I just explained, because this is the pelvis, and the pelvis is a little bit complex to define. And instead of using a visual 3D type, we're going to use a coda type of pelvis. And the reason for that will be obvious in just a moment. But when I click create, I just put in my subject mass and height as based on anthropometric data that scales the segments. It automatically associates these markers. So here uh, you see we have the right ACES, left ACES, the PSIS markers automatically identified. There are some calculations that happen behind the scenes to define our pelvis. What you'll probably notice is we have some extra markers here. These are not technically markers, these are landmarks. They're calculated based on publications by Bell et al. in 1989-1990. The positions of the ACES and PSAS markers can give us geometric references based on which we, from cadaver data, 
they define the right hip and left hip. And this has been shown to be very accurate over the years. So we're going to consider this as a reliable landmark that we're going to use now to define the right thigh. So to define the right thigh, we just pick it from the list, right thigh. You see, we could define it as kinematic only, but you see we have force plates. So let's go ahead and use kinetic data as well. We can get joint forces and moments, and it's gonna be visual 3D type. If I click create, now this interface looks a little bit different than the last one. We are trying to define a circle on the proximal end and distal end to define this truncated cone. We're gonna need at least two pieces of information on each end to define these circles. From the data we already have in here, obviously joint center, that's an easy one, right hip. We just talked about that. That's a very reasonable joint center for the joint at the hip. Whereas on the distal end, laterally, we're going to pick the right lateral knee, see it lit up there, and the right medial knee. There you have two pieces of information on the distal end. On the proximal end, we technically only have one piece of information. This is somewhat of a problem because we need to be able to define it. Now, we don't have other markers there, but what we can do, since we have another thigh that we are going to define on the left side, we can notice that the two thighs meet in the middle. We know the location of the right hip, we know the location of the left hip. You see that we have this option of piece of information here of the radius. If I can get a value for that radius, I have two pieces of information. The distance between them, if we can calculate that distance, half of that is going to be the radius. So I'll just put in 0 0.5 times, very conveniently there's a command in Visual 3D that is distance between right underscore hip and left underscore hip. Quite straightforward, but you'd have to actually know that to be able to use it. Now, this defines our segment, but for our motion trials, we want to track the segment. You see the section down here uh, where it says select tracking targets. Here, we're given options to be able to track it in space. If you've worked in motion capture for some time, you might be familiar with a phenomenon called skin movement artifact, which is very present at the knee. If we place markers at the knee for a static trial, that's fine. We can place them very accurately and say, okay, this is going to define my segments. But as we move, they aren't going to stay in that same location. There's a lot of literature out there. You've heard Tony talk about using bone pins to track segments better. Most subjects don't want you drilling markers into them. So here we have these other markers that are tracking markers that are on rigid clusters. You can just select them from the list. Here we have RTH1, 2, 3, and 4. Now this is a strange thing about Visual 3. I don't know why it's this way. If I just click on the name, it just selects that one and deselects all the others. So you have to click in the box or hold down control to select multiple ones. People can get very frustrated. Don't get frustrated. It's, I don't even think it's a bug. It, they just made it like that on purpose. <laughs> if I click apply, ta-da! Now I have a right thigh. You see that we have these arrows where this is the x-axis. And here we have the y-axis, and here we have the z-axis. These are defined from everything we just selected. The z-axis, for example, is going from the joint center on the distal end toward the joint center on the proximal end, and that's how you get that longitudinal axis. The x-axis is going from medial toward lateral on the right side, from lateral toward medial on the left side. And then the y-axis is coming out of the frontal plane. Now, obviously we we're able to define this, but this is only in the static trial. If I click build model, we only have two segments, you didn't even see anything happen. 
But very quickly, it calculated all of this applied to our motion trials. So if I come back to signals and events, just zoom out a little bit, you can see now I have a pelvis and thigh walking through my volume over the force plates. That being said, we want more than just those two segments. The next segment in our list would obviously be the right shank, still visual 3D type. On the proximal end, it's going to be identical to the distal end of the thigh. So just pick here the right lateral knee and the right medial knee. On the distal end of the shank, we're just going to use the malleolus markers. So the right lateral malleolus and the right medial malleolus. And finally, you see we still have these three tracking markers. So R tip one, two, and three. If I click apply, there's my segment. You see it also has its own coordinate system, different from the thighs. And the fact that they each have their own coordinate system later on, of course, we can't get into depth on that today uh, due to time, but having two coordinate systems on two different segments, we can calculate joint angles and use it for inverse dynamics, which we are going to touch on in a moment. And the final right segment would be the right foot. So again, laterally, same markers, right? Lateral me malleolus, right? Medial malleolus. So the foot you see is set up a little bit differently, but we still have these markers. We have a first metatarsal medially and a fifth metatarsal laterally. So RV met, R1 met. To track the foot, we don't want to use the malleolus markers because already the foot is complex. We're not doing multi-segment, but at least let's not include the malleoli as part of the foot. We do have four markers, including the right heel and the second metatarsal marker. So we'll just pick all of those from our list. So you see R1 met, R2 met, R heel, and R V met. If I click apply, there's our foot. Now if I click build model, just click play here. See, we have this full right side. Notice that the right side has a blue arrow, and the left side has a red arrow. The blue arrow indicates that the force data on the force plate has been associated with a segment. It, Visual 3D automatically identified that the right foot is contacting the second force plate, or maybe this first force plate, I'm not sure, but there is contact. Left side, well, we haven't defined it yet. The other thing I want to point out about the foot, and again, we really can't get to it today due to time. Notice it's got these arrows. They're not parallel to the floor. They're not passing through the segment. They're defined as we already discussed, but because of the location of them, there is an offset, which needs to be taken care of. If you were to go to bestbymechanics.com, or look through an analysis module that you have with your Qualysis system, you see there are different methods to remove this offset, uh, but they're mathematically a little bit more complex than we have time for today. Let's go ahead and also define the left side so that we don't leave it undone, and there'll be a little bit of a review for you as well. So the joint center for the left thigh, left hip, and before we have 0 0.5 times the distance between the right underscore hip, left underscore hip. Those are just the names of those landmarks put in there. And you can put any marker name in there as long as it exists, it'll find that distance. And laterally, we have the left lateral knee. Medially, we have the left medial knee. And we're going to track it with the four thigh markers. And we'll make sure we have a left shank. Same thing, left lateral knee, left medial knee, left lateral malleolus, and left medial malleolus. And we are going to track this with LTIB 1, 2, and 3. Finally, 
we have the left foot. So lateral malleolus, medial malleolus, laterally we have the fifth metatarsal and the first metatarsal. Oh, one thing, I don't think it's actually a bug, I just don't understand why they made it this way. So there we have a full lower body model. I clicked build model, so now under signals and events, we have a full lower body model. Very briefly, I'll show you how to use this to obtain some calculations. There are a number of ways we could do this directly by hand, but I will do this from the pipeline so that you can get an idea for what a pipeline is. The pipeline is a series of commands that are done in order. Less technical people tend to get very scared by this, like, oh, that's programming. It's not really programming. If you just think of it as in the program, where would I click to do all these things? Instead of clicking, we are going to put these in order so that, of course, we're only analyzing one person. I could just do all the clicking for every calculation. But if I have a hundred of these, I set up my pipeline one time and I just run it for all of them and I get my results much faster. And the reality of it, your analysis modules with the Qualysis system are doing exactly this. They're running Visual 3D pipelines behind the scenes. And you can set them up. It is not actually very difficult. You just have to learn how to do it. So what we're going to do is under compute model based data, I just select that, double click on it. And in here, if I wanted say joint moment, the joint moment should be, we'll do it for the right ankle. I'm just gonna call this R underscore ankle moment. Typically the resolution coordinate system you should use, of course you can pick whatever you want, but the uh, proximal joint is gonna be the best reference for that. So the proximal joint to the right ankle is going to be the right shank. So I click done, now it's ready to calculate that. But instead of going through and calculating that right away, let's go ahead and similarly calculate the joint moment for the right knee. So the proximal segment for that would be the right thigh. So R underscore knee moment. I've made pipelines with about a thousand commands in them. I won't do that today for you guys. But if I just click execute pipeline, what it does is it runs through all that. And now we have calculated those. You see, I set up those calculations. I told it, do those calculations. And now under link model based, you see I have our ankle moment and our knee moment. Now, these are looking pretty noisy. This has to do with the force plates. So I can do this from the pipeline as well, but I'll just filter it. Just do a quick low pass filter. And if I remove all graphs, let's go ahead and bring this over here. So you can see, there we have, we're able to build a model and calculate joint moments. And the real advantage of doing this in Visual 3D is that this is scientifically validated. If you try to publish this, a uh, reviewer will see this was done with Visual 3D, see how you set up your model, like, oh, okay. We know that that works, that's valid. If you do it in MATLAB, they can give you a lot of problems. Uh, so of course you can do it uh, that way. It'll probably take you a bit longer, but you're also gonna have to prove that you've done it correctly. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Is the alignment of the force plates always, so if it's good in QTM, it should be good in V3D? Mm -hmm. The force plate location comes from uh, okay. QTM. Good. Just want to make sure. Sometimes from different axes or something. Uh, yeah, sweet. Yes. So a force plate has its own um, coordinate system, yeah. but in QTM, we define where it is in space mm -hmm. and the orientation of the axes of the data coming from the force plates is also recalculated. Yeah. In that way. You'll see here on the side we have analog. Here we have 14 analog channels. These 
I'll go ahead and remove all graphs. For example, this would be our vertical analog channel. This is in volts. Now here is the recalculated force. That's going to be for FP1. Uh, so if I were to graph the Z, I'll just put a new graph. That's the same data, but calculated as a force. Advantage of Visual 3D is it never overwrites anything, doesn't delete anything. You have a history of all the data. So if you share data from one lab to another, you want to know what's been done to it, you can always find out. Yes, you can save your pipeline. There's a button here, save pipeline. Yep, and so then next time you have the same data set, different participant, yes. you can just run the pipeline. That is exactly the point of it. Thank you. Sure thing. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. And if you wanted to watch this or the following ones, you can find it at bassetbymechanics.com where essentially this training is the first hour of about 58 hours.